Using gobos can make your render look pro in a matter of seconds, and it's very easy to use. But if you don't know how quality lighting works, it's gonna be tough. In this video, I'll show you how to set up gobos, how to use them properly, and even how to make one your own. As you progress as an artist, you'll notice that flat lighting won't cut it for a lot of things. Extra detailed shadows are a cheap way to add texture, depth, and contrast in the scene. Increasing the overall production value without spending time to create models that block the light inefficiently. Let's get started with the basics. What is a gobo? Gobo stands for go between optics. It is used in actual studio lighting to create shadows by placing a card in between the light and the subject. This very same principle has been brought to 3D and we can use it to make our renders look photorealistic. Here are some common use cases for gobos and I'll show you some references as well. Here we can see gobos being used in Kung Fu Panda. The tree gives some extra textures to this animal. We can also see it being used in Shrek. Notice the tree-like patterns on the ground. And even in a Blender movie called Sprite Fright, gobos were used extensively when they were in the forest. Now that we know what gobos are, I'll show you how to use them in Blender. So normally if you want to add a gobo, you can press Shift A, go to Light, go to Spot, set this to Cycles instead of Eevee because it only works in Cycles, drag it upwards, drag this upwards as well, go to the Shader Editor, then in the Lighting Properties you can set Use Notes. And then when you have Use Notes, you can press Control T and it will automatically plug it into the color. I actually recommend plugging it into the strength because the color might be used for a black body note, but we'll get to that later. So now we can open up our image and we can select a gobo. And basically a gobo is a black and white image, but you can also use colored images. I'm going to select this tree. And if we go into the render properties now and increase the strength, we can see our gobo. And this is what it looks like. Now, there's a couple of things that you might want to know. So here are some settings that are crucial for any gobo that you are going to use. First of all, we have the power, which of course determines how strong it is. Then we have the radius, and this allows you to make the shadow more blurry if you would like. Now, if you unclick soft fall off, there is a problem with the normals, but I will go over that later on. Now, if I add a cube right over here and click on our light, you can select cast shadow, and it will either cast a shadow or will not cast a shadow. And this sometimes has its use cases. Now for the spot size, we can increase the light, but this is actually not the best way to use a gobo because now the shadow scales along with the light. But what if you want more light over here and the shadow to be more over here or a bit bigger? We are going to change that in a second, but first we have the blend. So if you increase the blend, it will soften out the edges on the side of the gobo. So now it's very harsh. It's a pretty much straight cut line, but if you increase this, it becomes a lot softer and you pretty much always want to use this to have a nice transition in your lighting. Now that we know what all the sliders do, we can take a look at the shader editor itself because there are a couple of things that you might want to know. But right now it's plugged into the UV and it's straight in the middle. But as I said before, if you now increase the spot size, the shadow grows along with it. But what if we do not want this? Well, there's a simple solution for this. Normal into the factor, and as you can see, it will be offset in a different region. But what we have to do is go to location, select the X and Y, and change it to 0.5. And now this gobo will be centered. Now watch what happens when I increase the spot size. The light increases, but the shadow stays in the same place. Now, what if you want to increase the scale of this shadow? Well, you could go over to the skill and select all of these and bring it over like so, and then you can make it either bigger or smaller depending on what you like. And as you just saw, there's a different thing happening. The image texture is repeating itself. Now, in some cases you might want to use this, for example, when you have a randomized gobo that goes all the way to the edge, and it isn't really noticeable if you use the repeat function. Now, in the image texture, we can select this. So on the third drop-down menu, we have repeat, but you can also set it to extend. And this means that we can now only use this texture and we can scale it infinitely small or infinitely big. We can also set it to clip. And clip basically means that it uses the image that we input directly. And this naturally is a rectangular image because it is impossible in any program to render out a circular image. It is always going to be square. And clip basically makes sure that we use that image. So as you can see, it was a square image with a dimensionality of 2160 by 2160. And uh, this is what it looks like when you use clip. Now, if you go to mirror, it will mirror the image once again. And it's slightly different than repeat because as you can see, this tree is upside down. Well, if we use repeat, all the trees are in the same direction. And that's basically the difference between repeat, extend, clip, and mirror. Another thing that you might want to know if you want to increase the realism of your lighting is by adjusting the temperature. The way we can do that is by adding a black body node, shift A, black body. And as soon as we plug this into the color, you can see that the color changes. And this is also the reason that we plug this image into the strength instead of into the color in this particular case. Because if you do have a gobo that uses colors, it's better to plug it into the color. But for now, we can use the black body node for example to set it to 4500 and now this will look a bit like the sun is shining. Now there's one more trick I'd like to show you. Shift A, 
add a value node, plug it into the scale. And as you can see, everything disappears because the value is zero. I'm going to set it to one and now the image reappears. If you go over here in the light properties and scroll down, you have some properties over here. So if you click this open, you can see the image and the factor mapping. Right here in the factor mapping, we are using the scale value, which you can open up right here. And from this tab, you can increase or decrease the scale. And this is something you can use if you do not want to open the shader editor, for example. So let's say you are in the timeline because you want to watch the animation of this, but you also want to change the scale and try some different things. And now that we understand the basics, we can go over to some more advanced Gobo tricks. I'm going to use one of the Gobos from the Ultimate Gobo Pack. Link is in the description. But if you have your own Gobos, you can still follow along with this tutorial as well. So I will add a window. So let's say that we want to use a normal window and I am going to take this window, for example, and drag it in here. And if I bring this up, we can see our window. Now I'm going to take another tree. So I will take real dead tree four. So I'm going over to the shader editor and I will select all of this from the real tree four. Copy, go over to this one, control V, bring it in here. And now if we add a math node, math node, plug it in here, set it to multiply and plug this value into the value. We have now combined these two gobos together. And if we go to the controls, it will still work as said previously. And now we can move the gobo around as we please. So we can go into the mapping of this one, bring it down maybe, maybe to the left or right. And in this way, we can combine different gobos together. It's also possible to change the scale of the tree behind this window. So in this fashion, we can combine different gobos together in order to create our own. So one more thing that you might want to know about gobos is that it is impossible to scale this like so, but it is possible to rotate it. So if you rotate it like this, bring it towards this side, it actually skews the image a bit and that can come in handy for certain use cases. Now you might be wondering what this blue line does and what this yellow line does. And the blue line is basically the equivalent of the spot size. So if we increase or decrease this, it also increases or decreases the spot size as you can see on the right. Now the yellow line is actually to rotate the entire gobo around. You can also press RR to achieve the same effect. Another important thing to know about gobos and light in general is that distance plays a factor in the light strength. But let me show you what I mean. If we bring this closer to the plane, it will be a lot stronger as you can see. So this light is shining very bright. While if we bring it further away, it actually becomes a lot softer and therefore less strong. Now, why would you want to know this? So let's say that the gobo is already located over here and it looks quite nice, but you want to increase the skill of this, but you don't want to bring it upwards and then mess around with the power and stuff like that. So your gobo is basically at the right place with the right strength. Now you can go over into the shader editor and I'm just going to connect this one to this as well. And then we can increase the spot size, but it will not do anything as we said before. And then if we increase the skill on this one, the light strength will actually remain the same while making a bigger image. Now as you can see there's some stretching going on and the reason for it is the way the spotlight operates. Since it's moving in a cone it might distort the image. So if you bring it upwards then decrease the spot size and then decrease the scale then everything will work out fine. So that's one thing that you have to keep in mind when working with gobos is that the distance from the object that the light shines on matters and therefore there are different ways to handle this properly. You can also change the color over here in whatever color you would like. So if you are following this tutorial and you have a problem where the radius doesn't work and it actually destroys the image there's a very simple solution. We simply have to click on soft fall off and now it will work out. And now finally I want to show you one more thing that gobos are capable of. So if we go to the procedural gobo over here and drag in the procedural window, for example, drag it upwards, go to the shader editor. We can play around with sliders and make our own gobos using math, basically. So we can increase the blinder size. We can increase the amount of blinders if we'd like. We can also increase the vertical amount. So those are the bars in between. And let's say we also want to increase the vertical width. That is totally possible. And we can also change the softness of the blinders or the softness of the vertical windows separately if we would like to. But procedural gobos aren't everything either because there are limitations to what a procedural texture can do. For example, it's nearly impossible to get a procedural animated airplane. And the same goes for person stalking, for example. So you get person and they are talking animated and it is not possible to get this using procedural gobos. So procedural gobos do have their limitations. And here's another thing you might want to know. You can also do this in area lamps, but there are some different settings. So I'm going to show you that right now in the light properties. There we have the power, but we also have the shape. You can set it to a rectangle, for example, a disc or an ellipse. And in this case, I'm just going to use the square. We can change the size over here. So you don't necessarily have to scale it like this. And we also have the beam shape. So normally this is set to 180 degrees, which means that it is entirely soft. But if you set it to zero, 
it becomes very harsh and therefore possible to see the light. So if we hold shift and drag this spread out, it will become a bit softer. So if you use area lamps in your day-to-day -day life, that is a trick that you might want to know about. Now one more thing I can show is that there are also colored gobos. So it's definitely possible to take an image like this that has a color in it. Go to the shader editor for now. But in this case, you wouldn't plug it into the strength but plug it into the color. And now for the final part, we are going to make a gobo ourselves. So I'm going to delete this, pressing X, Shift A, Mesh, Plane, add this, scale it up just a little bit, Shift A, add a light, Area. I'm going to drag it upwards, increase the size just a little bit, and now I'm going into the light properties, and I'm going to decrease the spread to zero. So let's go to the cycles version, and now you can see that the light is exactly pointing down in straight lines, instead of being blurred like this. I'm going into the shader editor, and as you can see, there are no notes. So I'm going to press use notes right here on the side. So I'm going to add a Voronoi texture by pressing shift three, which is my shortcut, distance into the strength. I'm going to change F1, to distance to edge, I'm going to decrease the randomness to make it all squares, I'm going to add a color ramp, increase the strength of this, and now we have something that looks like a window. Now of course you can increase or decrease the skill, I'm going to set it to 3. And now we have a pretty interesting texture going on for this render. There's actually a render where I used exactly this technique for the table. Now you can play around with the spread if you'd like, hold shift to have some finer control and maybe blur it out just a little bit and this looks pretty interesting. Of course you can do with this whatever you want, increase the randomness or change this to smooth f1 and then play around with the color ramp to get something interesting as well. So that's how you make a gobo yourself. Of course it has some limitations but you can do some pretty interesting stuff with this. And now you know all there is to know about gobos. In this video you learned what a gobo is and how it works. You also know how to adjust the sliders to tweak and optimize your lighting for your renders. You know when to use it and how other artists use it as well. If you want more information on the Ultimate Gobo Pack and what kind of gobos are in there, then click the link in the description. And if you want to become an undeniable force in the 3D space, then I highly recommend watching this video next.